What is this? Pie backwards is pie? I baked you a pie. Oh boy, what flavor! Pie, pie, pie. Dad, I'm hungry. Pie hungry, I'm bad. Why did you name me this way? Why, why, why? I baked you a pie. Oh boy, what flavor! Pie, pie, pie. Dad, I'm hungry. Pie hungry, I'm bad. Why did you name me this way? Why, why, why? Celebrate Pie Day this week with a slice of raspberry pie. Hi, I'm Robert Donlin, and this is Lights by the Sea. In honor of 3.14 Day this week, we're going to set up the lighting lab with a raspberry pie. You're probably wondering, what is this lighting lab Robert keeps talking about? It's basically a testing area for your Christmas lights. Just like you would spend hours testing your traditional Christmas lights, we need to get our pixel lights tested as well. The difference is testing pixels can be a little bit more fun. We can put these pixels into our props and we can also sequence them before putting them into our bigger shuttle. Before we get started, we'll need a few supplies. I'll be sure to put links in the description below. Here's what we're gonna need. A Raspberry Pi, a Falcon Pi cap, a 12 volt power supply, a power cord, an SD card that's at least four gigabytes, a string of 12 volt pixels, an ethernet cable, and some wire. In order to control the smart pixels, we will need to download software that will be used by the Raspberry Pi, so let's do that first. You should remember the Falcon Christmas form from the resources video. If not, I'll link the video in the upper right now. We are going to download and install an image file onto an SD card. After that, the SD card will be used in the Raspberry Pi to load the software needed to control our lights. Click on the link that says Download and Install Instructions. The Falcon Pi Player software is maintained on GitHub. Scroll down on the page to see the downloads. As of today, the latest version with an image is 2.53. So we will download the FPP version 2.5 pi.zip file to our computer. Next, we'll need a program to burn the Falcon Pi Player image to our SD card. Browse to SourceForge.net Projects, Win32 Disk Imager, and download that application, then install it. Put your SD card in the adapter and put it in your computer, then open up the Win32 Imager. Browse to the Falcon Pi Player image and select the file, then hit Open. Under Device, choose the drive letter for your SD card, probably D or E. Then click on the right button on the bottom. Now that we have our supplies, let's build the lab. Remove the Pi and the Pi cap from the packaging. Attach the Pi cap to the Pi by connecting the GPIO pin connectors together. Once connected, screw the Pi cap to the Pi with the provided hardware. Locate the SD card slot and then insert the SD card as shown into the Raspberry Pi. Attach an Ethernet cable to your Pi. You may have to bring your Pi close to your router or switch to start with. Now we can plug in the Pi and let it boot up the software we have on the SD card. This takes about a minute or so. Leave the Pi on a mat or a box and return to your computer. We will now access the Falcon Pi player by typing in HTTP backslash backslash FPP into your browser. Success! You now have a working Falcon Pi player. The Falcon Pi player is a powerful tool that many people use to run their whole shows. We'll talk more about the capabilities of Falcon Pi player in some later episodes. Today, we're just going to use it in our lighting lab to test some pixels. Our next step will be to hook up a 12 volt power supply and some pixels to the Pi cap. So let's get back to the lighting lab. All right, unplug your Falcon Pi player while we connect the power supply and lights. Always remember, safety first. We never want to be handling live wires. To connect the power supply to the Pi cap, we'll need a couple wires. I like to use black and red. Black for neutral or ground and red for hot or power. This is a common color scheme in DC power circuits. I also like to put four crimp connectors on the power supply side. For the side that will connect to the Phoenix connectors on the Pi cap, I'll put crimping pin connectors. Now we'll connect our wires to the power supply. Red for V plus and black for V minus. Take note of the voltage, which will be V plus, and G and D ground for the V minus. I like to mark the Phoenix connector with a G for ground and V for voltage. Be sure to open the connector jaws on the Phoenix connector by turning counterclockwise. Insert the black into the ground side or V minus and the red to the V plus side or V for voltage and tighten down the connectors by turning clockwise. Finally, attach the connector back to the Pi cap. Make sure the power cord is not plugged in and attach connectors to your power supply input cord. You should have a hot, neutral, and ground wire. 
In AC circuits, it is common for the hot to be black, white to be neutral, and ground to be green. Before we connect our pixels, we need to determine the input side of the pixels. You may have purchased some with connectors, which makes it easier. In some cases, they don't come with connectors, so we'll have to figure out what the connections are. Here is a common pixel connection. You will see G for ground, DI for data in, DO for data out, and V for voltage. It may show 5 volts or 12 volts depending on the pixel. On the pie cap, identify the order of the ground, the power, and the data. I like to mark the sides of the connector. Attach the connector to port 1, then attach an Ethernet cable, and finally, power on the Pi. Now we need to configure Falcon Pi Player for our pixel string. Open up the Falcon Pi Player homepage. Select the Input Output Menu option and select Channel Outputs. Select the tab for Pi Pixel Strings. We had 50 pixel lights on port 1. Leave the other items defaulted. I have to turn my lights down to 30% for better video. Now select the Save button to save the configuration. Falcon Pi Player will ask to restart. Select the Restart FPPD button and wait for the restart. Now we can go test the lights. Select the Status Control menu and choose Display Testing. Our start channel will be 1 and our end channel will be 150. Now check the Enable Test Mode box. Voila! We now have lights! Congratulations, you got your first string of lights running. We got quite a lot done today to celebrate Pi Day. Now you should have a good functioning lighting lab to test your pixels and your prompts. It's a good idea to have an area to test your lights and prompts. I hope you're as excited as I am to get some prompts built and tested. Don't forget to celebrate Pi Day this week by going out and buying yourself a Raspberry Pi and a Pi Cap. If you're gonna do something different this year to celebrate Pi Day, please comment below and let me know what you're going to do. If you like this video, please like it, and even better, share it on Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media outlet that you frequent. Once again, I'm Robert Donlan, and this is Lights by the Sea. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the second best time is today. So let's get started.